Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here. Welcome back to the servicing table, almost said railway, it's a servicing table today. I haven't done a video like this in ages, but I think uh, it's gotten quite desperate. I think I really do need to make this video. Um, so as you might know, I run a locomotive maintenance service uh, where I basically fix people's locomotives. And I've had a couple of Thomas and Friends logos from Backman um, into service. And both of the ones I had to service had a burnt out motor. And I thought, oh, that's a bit odd because they were from different people. And then, come to think of it, I've been having loads and loads of emails about these too, especially from people in America where these are sold, saying, oh, my Thomas and Friends loco has slowed right down and it's smoking and it makes a horrible noise. And basically, it sounds to me like uh, the motors in these have a bit of a habit of burning out and going bad, and they don't seem to be lasting all that long. So in my opinion, it's really, really important that you know how to keep these things lubricated and clean so that the motors inside have to do as little work as possible. Um, to keep these locos moving. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, it might lose me a little bit of business to show you how to do this yourself, but hey, you know, uh, children have to come before money, don't they? And uh, I think it's awful if uh, kids are having to suffer these things breaking down. So yeah, there's really not a lot you have to do to service these things. Um, there's not a lot to it, but the things that you can do will really, really help uh, to keep these things moving along. And it's really, really important that you do this, especially because they tend to have motor issues. So yeah, doing this might or might not help, but it should at least prolong the life of the loco a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to be working on Douglas today, and of course all of the Backman range are a little bit different. Uh, and you might get screws in different places, and you might have slightly different motors and mechanisms, but essentially they are all the same. So just take this with a pinch of salt, and bear in mind that they might vary a little bit. So all you're going to need for this is really basic parts and things. You're going to need uh, some cotton buds or Q-tips, whatever you call them. So that sort of thing. Um, cleaning fluid. Now I've changed my cleaning fluid of preference. I used to use lighter fluid, but now I use isopropyl alcohol. It's actually a lot cheaper. This uh, big bottle cost me uh, only less than £10 anyway. And looking at the ingredients, I think it's a little bit safer to be breathing in than the lighter fluid. Obviously you don't want to be breathing either of them in, but uh, yeah. Uh, then you want your oil, of course, and your screwdrivers. There are a few other tools along the way uh, that are very, very useful, but they're not absolutely necessary. Okay, so the first thing then is uh, obviously keep your locos dust free. This isn't an, a necessary step, but uh, here's a little tip. You can use your screw, um, screwdrivers, paint brushes, just to keep the dust off these things. Now I have two separate uh, paint brushes. I have a big one to do the body and then a small separate one to do the mechanism on the underside. And the reason you use a separate one is because this one might get a little bit oily um, when it's you know brushing the wheels. So you're not going to want to put that on the body work. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the second thing I use that's really important, but uh, not necessarily um, absolutely necessary. <laughs> uh, it's a little cradle like this, which you stick them in. So the first thing I'm going to figure out, uh, I've not actually had this one open before, so uh, we're going to look at this together. I'm going to figure out if there's a way to power the wheels uh, without using the wheels, so that we can clean the wheels, and that's a really important thing. So I'm going to take the body off to begin with, and while we're doing it, we're going to look and see if there's a way to lubricate the motor, which of course is also very important. So I can see four screws on Douglas. Is it Douglas? Yeah, it's Douglas, not Donald. Uh, and I'm going to undo these and see what happens. They're very, very tight, so you want to be careful not to round these off, actually. That's two. There's a third one here. And also, if you're not sure which screws to undo, take a look at the instructions, because uh, these all come with an instruction booklet, these models. And uh, they, those are very, very useful for showing exactly which screws need to come apart. Is that coming out yet? Well, I've noticed actually it isn't just four screws, there's a couple more uh, in the middle there as well, so we've got to take those out. I hope, I hope this is right. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. It's coming out now. Alright, just let those screws drop down. Okay, and I can put the body to one side now because uh, we don't need that right at this second. Okay, so as you can see here we've got the eye mechanism thing here and uh, then we've also got access to these resistors which we could probably use to power the motor for a little minute there. Uh, but now we need to find a way to access the gears and things. Now this part might not be absolutely necessary so if you're not too confident don't do this bit, but I'm going to try and do it because I'll be interested to see if I can access the motor on this. So it looks to me, um, based on the others that I've serviced, that there are one or maybe two screws sometimes to hold this lot together. And if it all comes to pieces, um, 
don't do this. Because, <laughs> oh, like I say, I've not done this with Donald and Douglas yet. Is that coming out? Yeah, I reckon that back screw is probably holding it on as well, so I'm going to try that. So there's another screw at the back. Um, I serviced a Henry not too long ago from Backman, and that one definitely had just the one screw. So it looks like it's one or two screws anyway. Yeah, that's it. I think that's coming off now. Okay, but there are some wires here which, which connect it to the chassis, so you're not going to want to undo those. Okay, here's a word of warning then if you want to do this. Um, this is quite important actually for oiling the motor. If you want to do this, though, be aware that as soon as we take this apart, there are going to be gears everywhere. So uh, don't misplace the gears. I would recommend, strongly recommend, leaving them in place so that you can just put this plate back on. But yeah, there's basically screws all over this thing. There's one, two, three, four on the Donald here. And I think there was about four on the Henry as well. And I think all these pieces are normally about the same. And it's a little bit like a split chassis from Batman's older models, except it isn't used to conduct or anything like that. Okay, where am I putting these screws? Just there. Okay, so we should be able to lift this thing out now. Oh, nope, there's one more still in. Thought I undid that one. Now oh, that's interesting. That screw is not coming out. Hmm. Bear with me. There we go. All right, got that out. That's weird. They should normally come out properly, but again, you know, these are probably made quite cheaply. Right. I'm going to try and prise this thing apart now. Then, which is a bit scary. I must admit. I'm going to take this uh, eye mechanism thick piece off it as well. There we go. Got to make sure that goes back on at the end. There we are. So that's come off, and as you can see, there are all the gears. I'm just going to wipe my hands. Now, the eye mechanism has got such a lot of torque. Um, it goes so slowly that it's got so much power, it doesn't really need to be uh, lubricated that much. But we're going to lubricate the gears anyway, just because um, it's nice to lubricate the gears. And uh, then you know that everything is going. So here are the two gears which power the, the wheels, that's the important set. And then you've got these which power the eyes. So it is worth just putting a little bit of oil. Only a little bit though, because you don't want to mess the motor up with too much oil, that would not be good. And then you want to put a little bit of oil on the worm drive there from the motor, and then a little bit on the bearings of the motor. There we go. Only a little bit, because if you put too much on, it's going to flood the motor, and then it will get onto the, the, the brushes and the commutator and burn. <laughs> you don't want that. Okay, and I'm just going to slip this top piece back on. It's a lot of work just to do that, but it is worth it. It is absolutely worth it. Okay, let's screw this back together. That's the nastiest part. And if you don't fancy doing that, if that is too much work for you, you don't really have to do that. Um, the important part is coming up now, and that is to clean the wheels and the pickups. Now, I've attached a neodymium magnet to this screwdriver, which uh, just boosts the magnetivity of the screwdriver a little bit. And uh, that's another tip you can have for nothing. <laughs> there we are, that's gone in. side like I did, there's no reason why any of the gears should come out of place. Okay, and I'm going to reattach that little eye mechanism, which incidentally I didn't have to do with Henry. When I serviced Henry, his eye mechanism uh, wasn't in the way. Okay, so that thing sits in there, and that thing sits on top. And then when we put the body back on, we've got to make sure that the eyes line up with the little eye controller. There we go, that's that. Okay, now I am going to power up the motor. And because it's not connected to the wheels, I'm going to connect my crocodile leads. Let me move this magnet out of the way. I'm going to connect my crocodile leads directly to the wheels. Okay, and give it a little bit of power. And as you can see, that gear is moving, it's turning, it's going at different speeds, it seems to slow down occasionally, which isn't brilliant, 
and then you've got the eye mechanism which uh, is working no, actually no it's not <laughs> it's probably a bit too tight unless I've got that on the wrong way let's have a look no I don't think that's on the wrong way no So don't put that on too tight, this little eyepiece, don't put it on too tight because that was uh, causing it to lock up. But that's that, that's sorted, so we're going to now fix that back on. So I'm going to just disconnect my clips here. And then we're going to do the important part which is to access the axles and the pickups because if the pickups get dirty you're not going to get power going to the motor obviously eventually which is uh, very very bad. And also if you don't keep the wheels lubricated they could seize up one day or they could at the very least you know, wear more quickly and your model won't last as long. And I, you know, I'm all for trying to make these things last as long as they possibly can which would be nice wouldn't it. So make sure that's screwed in good and tight because obviously it needs to make contact with the wheels. Okay, so what we're going to do now then is we're going to try and clean the wheels. Uh, and I've balanced this upside down, which is not always a good idea, but I'm going to try and get away with it. Uh, but what you could also do, in fact, I might as well show you this, um, is you can use a helping hand, a little bit like mine, just to steady it a little bit while you work on it. So let's adjust this. Move my screwdrivers out of the way. And then just clamp this on. Like that, and now this thing is pretty good and solid. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the three screws, and most of these models use three screws for this. Uh, if it's a bigger model, it might be more, uh, but normally three is about the least it will be. So you want to take these out. These aren't very tight, I must admit. Fairly loose already. And if it is just three, the top should lift off. But bear in mind, there's going to be a few wires. Now, be very careful with these because you've got pickups here which um, are delicate, but they will need cleaning, so I'm just going to sit back down. I'm going to grab myself a cotton bud then, and I'm going to unscrew the lid on my lighter fluid. In fact, no, it's not lighter fluid anymore. Isopropyl alcohol. And very, very carefully, I'm going to clean the ends of those contacts, or you can clean the whole contact if they're dirty. If you've used your, mo your loco a lot, it, they will be dirtier than mine are, but uh, mine don't get run all that often. You are good and clean. Now if you want to use an extra good clean, you can get one of these fibre pens, uh, which uh, is very, very useful for cleaning these, but just make sure you don't touch your fingers with them because they are nasty. So you just clean the ends with the fibre pen. There we go. That keeps those pickups good and clean. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, clean the axles on the Locos. Now, like mine, if yours is like mine, you'll see that some of Backman's lubricant is still on there. But I'm going to clean that off because I'm going to be putting my own onto that. So just clean those up nicely. Make sure they're good and clean. Make sure you don't damage the pickups while you're doing that. Just want to take the excess off. There we go. And once that's done, you can use your oil just to lubricate each bearing. So a little bit, just a little drop. You don't need a lot. I'm going to put a little bit on this gear as well, if you can see. Yep, a little bit on the gear, and a bit on the back axles as well. Okay, almost ready to put this pickup plate back on, but what I would first recommend doing is just very carefully bending these outwards. And that makes sure that the tension against the wheel is good. Because even if they're touching the wheel, sometimes if the tension isn't great, it's not going to make a good contact. There we go, so that's done, they've been bent out very gently, you really don't want to be bending those too much, but a little bit of bend is great. I'm just bending those back into place now so that they fit behind the wheels. Don't put any screws in until you're happy that they're all in place, but I think, to me, those look like they are in place. Okay, so I'm going to hold the plate while I do this because I don't want it to spring back up at me and just put the screws in very loosely to begin with you only want them in there loosely so another one and the last one still still putting them in loosely and once they're all in loosely you can go along and tighten them up but that just makes sure that the whole plate sits in place nicely there we go, that's done. Okay, now we've got to clean the wheels, and for this bit I'm just going to temporarily release it from my helping hand, and we're going to bring the crocodile clips back, and I'm going to figure out where we can apply power. 
I'm going to put them onto this little circuit board, if I can. Is that going to go? Yeah, as you can see, it's walking along the, the table. So that's good. I'm going to flip this back upside down now and switch it on. Quite high speed. So as you can see, that's going nicely. And uh, this is great now because you can turn, the, you can clean the wheels with this. So more lighter, no, not lighter fluid. I'm going to keep doing that. I know. Isopropyl alcohol or any clean fluid you choose to use. Put it on the wheels. Clean them nicely. There we go. As you can see, cotton bud's getting pretty dirty already. And once you clean the surface of the wheels. You've got to make sure you're cleaning the inside of the wheels as well, where the pickups make contact. Because in fact, that's even more important that you keep that clean than it is the, the main body of the wheel. So, don't forget that. But I'm just doing the wheel surfaces to begin with. And again, mine aren't bad, but if yours are bad, keep replacing the cotton bud and keep doing it until the cotton buds come out clean. Right, the insides of the wheels. Oh yeah, look how dirty that one is. Don't know if you can see that. Pretty dirty though. And it does get dirty because that's where the little sparks get made. Chuck that one away. Get a new one. You don't have to worry about saving your cotton buds. Once the cotton buds are dirty, just replace them. As you can see, more dirt's coming off those now. Okay, back ones. Make sure the back ones are good and clean. There we go. Right, that's nice. I'm just going to undo the pickups. The crocodile clip, I'm sorry. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly test that each wheel is making contact. Okay, so I'm going to hold the, my black clip here, test that wheel, yep, yeah, that's making contact. That wheel, yep, yeah, that's making contact. That wheel, yes. Same on the other side, that wheel we know is, that wheel we know is, and that wheel is. Okay, perfect. Right, now we've just got to put the body back on, and that will be that. Now, there is one thing you've got to watch, and that is that the eyes fit back into place. So I'm going to show you it on this camera. As you can see, there's little plugs for the eyes to go in, and one of those is bent slightly to the side. So you want to make sure that those are equal. So I'm going to put mine all the way to the left. Well, in fact, we can't do that. We're going to have to look where it is on the, the model itself. So my model, yeah, it's all the way to the left, as you can see, the little lugs here that power the eyes. Let me show you that up close so you can see what I mean. It doesn't matter this because if you get it wrong you can just do it again. As you can see these are to the left. So I'm going to make sure when the model is upright like this that the eyes go to the left which is actually to the right for me. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver. You can see this. Use the screwdriver to make sure that they are in place like that. Roughly in place because you know they're going to get placed better anyway once these go in. Right, let me just double check these are where we want them to be. And you can do pretty crazy things with these eyes if you uh, get it in wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, you see what I was talking about there? I got it in wrong, and that's what happens. <laughs> so all you've got to do is lift it back out and try again. Let's see what happened there. Yeah, one of them got pushed sideways. So let's try that again. I reckon that first one went in right. Okay, try again. Okay, that time, I haven't screwed it in yet, that time it looks a little bit better. But what I am going to do is just uh, power the wheels again, just to make sure that the eyes are moving the way they're supposed to be before I screw the body back on. So let's have a look. Yeah, and they are. Um, you won't have seen that on the camera, but I just saw that the eyes moved across, which uh, showed me that that was in right. Okay, now that, we, now that we're happy that everything's working, uh, we can replace the screws. And there were six on this, so that's an awful lot of screws, isn't it? But that's all right. You know, it means that the body's not going to come off. <laughs> that's certainly true. Just got to make sure I get this in right. That's two. And again, you can do what we did with the pickup plate. You can put them all in quite loosely to begin with and then tighten them up later on. So I'm just going to screw these on, I'll be back in a sec. 
Okay, they're done and they're good and tight now. Let me just double check. So again, just to reiterate then, make sure everything is cleaned and oiled. Use plenty of oil on the gears, but make sure you don't over-oil the motor because that can be disastrous. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. The wheels are clean, the pickups are clean, and uh, there's plenty of tension on the pickups. We've checked that. Uh, everything's oiled, so she should be ready to go, or he should be ready to go, I'm sorry. So let's take him down to the track and see how he performs now, shall we? Okay, so there he is down onto the track then, and we kind of already know he's going to work because we've tested every wheel, but you never do know. So let's double check. And as you can see, he's going very, very nice and smoothly now. Got over the express point perfectly. And I would recommend after you've done this, just to let him run for a bit, just so that that oil doesn't sit there and stagnate on the gears. Let him run for 10 minutes and make sure all that oil works in. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll say thank you very much for watching. Make sure you do this every once in a while because it really will help. And uh, thank you for watching. Alright folks, see you next time.